Welcome back to Good Guardian Canine Working Dog. Good Guardian Canine Working Dog, more than just dogs. Continuing the conversation of the old family red nose, the Rolls Royce of game dogs. I think the main question in part one, I was responding to what qualifies these modern dogs as old family red nose. And I think I covered a lot of that in, in a roundabout way, in a quick response sort of way. We addressed, uh, I think, the size of the dogs. And I'm not overly critical of the size of the dogs, but we do have new... Uh, dog boys involved with the dog man's job and they have this mentality that the dogs have to be 55 and under or 60 below 60 pounds but historically as far back as you can find anything described similar to an american pit bull terrier you will find their body weights varied that can be found out with just basic reading and if you have any experience in the dog for over 50 years and you'd be able to ascertain that the dog's body weight do actually vary um, 60 pound is a normal body weight for a game dog 65 pound is normal um, when it comes to the old family red nose they do throw they do tend to throw lot larger dogs and that needs to be understood I'm not pushing so much on the size of the dogs and being overly, overly critical of how big or how small a dog is. I know that the, I'd like to say modern dog boys is the best way I can describe what they call dog men today. At least some, you know, those who are kind of a lot younger and is more into the showing and telling everything they learn seem to be from what they see online and not really hardcore personal experience so you'll find them saying that the dogs has to be this body weight and the dog has to be that body weight as if that is the traditional body weight of of a game dog the dogs are they come from a background of varying in size I mean they vary they vary in size some dogs were large and some dogs were small and every so often you would get a throwback dog that is quite large moving into the realm of 80 pounds uh, Angus was one of those types of dog and he was a pure Serona dog um, but typically you would find regularly 65 pound dogs I think I mentioned in the first part, uh, part one, that the old family red nose tend to throw larger dogs. You do have a lot of dogs that throw larger dogs. Um, nowadays, when it happens, I think there's a lot of surprising these dog men or dog boys as if this is a frightening thing, as if it's abnormal, but it's normal. Centipede was 65 pounds. Uh, if you knew anything about the history of the dog called uh, the Coda Chief of Larson, so Will, uh, which is a, a dog from Will Rock's kennel, he was 65 pounds. Um, many other dogs that worked, game dogs, were 65 pounds and above. Mayday was a larger dog. Um, but in, in his generation of dog men, the size he was, they considered that abnormal, but it's not. Historically, as far back as you can go, the dog size varied. The dogs were not only bred to engage another dog, that's not what they were bred for originally. They were bred for hunting, for engaging animals and baiting. Um, engaging another dog was the last thing on the list. I mentioned this quite a few times. And so their body weight would need to vary. You would need some dogs larger to take on a bull or a bear or something like that. But I get it, the modern dog men prefer a smaller dog and that's fine. 
but the dogs are being dwarfed a bit too much. You find some of the dogs even squatty looking, almost like it's a bully. A lot of them I've seen looking like a bully. But pull out any of the historical pictures and take a look at, a, a, at an Emphil or Wilder dog. Any one of the old family red-nosed red dogs traditionally. You won't find the squattiness. Those dogs are well proportioned. Lots of legs underneath them to carry their body weight and their agility and, and their cat-like movement. These new dogs that they're saying, well, it's 27 times a line bred on this dog and a, on that dog. Why doesn't the profile of your dog re reflect this um, line breeding on such dogs that you speak of? Because it should. You know, I did mention um, when you inbreed and line breed extremely, you will have squatting of the dogs. They will lose size. They will lose, they will, they will dwarf. It dwarfs your dogs. And so that's something you want to look at. I mean, the real point is, is this. For example, if a dog is 55 pounds, does it not qualify as a game dog if it's of the same lineage? And if it's 56 pounds, does it not qualify? If it's 60 pounds, does it qualify? If it's of the same lineage bred from the same stock? I hope you get my point. So, I'm not overly critical on body weight, but the dog should be extremely game as i said animal aggressive extreme intense prey drive extreme loyalty and most important the highest level of gameness extremely game this was the temperament and trait sought after quality of the traditional old family red-nosed dog or the irish dogs in particular extreme intense prey drive and gameness as i said in addition to such variable qualities in the is the color of the eyes the toenails color deep red or or black the nose color copper or red is ideal as it is an old family red nose dog a butterfly nose is frowned upon or any other color doesn't really qualify as an old family red nose dog uh, the color coat, it could be light fawn, a mid mahogany to deep rust color. Uh, the, the deep red is ideal for the old family red nose. Minimum percentage of white markings are allowed uh, for an old family red nose dog. I'll speak with respect to a lot of the white that we're seeing so prominent in the dogs now. Very common on a lot of the dogs that are being called old family red nose and we know that traditionally this high percentage of white was not the norm but before i get to that i just want to make mention of the in the color coat the lack of pigmentation that we're seeing in a lot of the dogs now i mean there is pigmentation there because these are red dogs they're brown so naturally there is pigmentation but the a lot of the light faded colors champagne almost a pale champagne to light fawn that we're seeing and tawny colored dogs that we're seeing it takes away from the dogs uh, the health of the dogs very strong pigmentation is conducive to good health in the dogs as i said in as i mentioned in the cards it affects their their vision it affects their resistance to allergies and also um, the hearing of some dogs depending on the lightness of the color coat that rich red coat that we're used to seeing in the past dogs um, we don't see much of that anymore and that is absolutely necessary the pigmentation absolutely necessary for good health in the dogs now that is not a way to say that if the dogs are not dark, and I don't mean chocolate, I just mean deep red. It's not a way to say that if the dogs aren't dark coated, the dogs will be sick. It's not that common, but it does take away from the dogs if you're breeding consistently in the directions of low pigment or low pigmentation in the dogs. So it's good to start breeding 
for very strong pigmentations in your dogs if you're not someone who's ever placed that into consideration. Now, with respect to the white, this uh, high percentage of white on the dogs, there's a few things to consider. Um, I'll address this as one of the questions that I'm asked quite often. Uh, one of the questions were with respect to the size of the dogs. Um, and this is re with respect to color in terms of the, the amount of white that is on the dogs that we're seeing now that are being called old family red nose. And a few things here needs to be considered as factors. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'll use centipede, for example. Centipede is coming from a background of uh, Kobe cr blood crossing into, into that blood to make um, centipede what he was. But what needs to be considered first and foremost in even the old family red nose, the ideal or the goal that was to be captured or that was after was not color. Gameness was what they were after. They were after gameness in the dogs. And yes, the dogs were game. Centipede is a very game dog. But I'm using Centipede as an example because in Centipede's background, because of the Colby blood, and if you're familiar with the Colby dogs, they are usually anywhere from 30 to 50% and even more white on the body of these dogs. For example, if you look in the back of Centipede's pedigree, you'll find a Colby dog by the name of Bunch. Well, Bunch is about 45 to almost 50% white. And you can follow, trace Bunch's pedigree back. You'll even find more dogs that are, are of a higher percentage of white on their body. So that's one factor to be considered. Many of the past dogs that were in the, the genetics, the pedigree of the old family red nose had white on them. Of course, they didn't breed consistently toward these dogs with white, but there are dogs in their pedigrees with white. That is one factor. Before I close out this issue of this excessive white on the present old family red nose dogs, I will say there is no accounting for this excessive white on the dogs. Certainly if someone is breeding old family red nose, the idea wouldn't be for this person to be trying to produce more dogs with white on them. So therefore, where is this excessive white coming from? I know historically of the dogs in the back, dogs like uh, Bunch, which I've mentioned, that has a high percentage of white that was a part of Centipede's pedigree, a very game dog that was bred over and over in Centipede's pedigree also, is a dog called Vic, it was a brindle dog with white around his neck on his paws, and also I believe on his tail, if I'm not mistaken about the tail. But these dogs that are, we're, and we're speaking about going back quite a large sum of years more than 50 years back we're speaking so this this sudden burst of high concentrate of white in these dogs is not accounted for it really should not be there and it's very questionable wh whether most of these dogs are actually old family red nose or not i'll speak on that shortly so one main factor from the past is the Colby crosses into the old family red nose blood. We do have a lot of the Colby dogs are dominant in white coat. So that settles that. Another factor, let's fast forward a little bit to um, today. Uh, a bit more modern, you'll find dogs that do have a good percentage of old family red nose blood and the breeders are trying to increase that so they would use another dog from another line that has old family red nose blood in it but has something else in addition to that um, for that dog's makeup 
and bringing that dog into their bloodline to increase the old family red nose blood, it is possible that dog is coming from a background of a lot of dogs that have white markings on the face, on the feet, such as socks markings and such. So that could be another factor for these modern dogs speaking. Hopefully you're finding this informative so far. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Enjoy the videos. Enjoy the dogs. Help those who you can as much as you can. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.